Welcome. Thanks for having us. Hello, Valentina. Hello. Um, Hello, so, everyone. So glad to be here. Um, yes, what are we going to play uh, this evening? What's on the menu? It's on the menu that we are going to um, uh, co-launch uh, your book within the setting of London. Um, Brexit has been um, like, has been happened like I think 50 years already. Um, and we are looking forward into future dystopia in a kind of vaporwave, uh, cyberpunkish, uh, but still very realistic setting of London. In the back, you see um, the London Eye, maybe, and we are in the outskirts a bit. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us well? Is like the microphone okay? Yeah. Can, can. Otherwise, let us know. Um, and um, yeah, so maybe just a few more words about this specific game. Uh, it's a game uh, by the company Ubisoft. So um, Ubisoft is one of the biggest gaming companies so far. Oh, there's, there's like a delay, I think. Um, and uh, they have like different branches of games. They have their more conservative branch, which is based on the worlds and books of Tom Clancy, like conservative Republican author. And they have their more progressive branch, which is a bit what we're going to play tonight. Uh, and this is like the series called Watch Dogs, um, focusing on, uh, yeah, like, as you said, like kind of not so far in the future, kind of dystopian setting where we play like a team of um, hackers, hacktivists. Bitniks. Bitniks, <laughs> yeah, bitniks yes. yes. Thank you. Um, somehow fighting big corporations so like the big corporations and the corrupted state and and that's kind of the enemies here and we are fighting for privacy and uh, freedom and uh, usually in the background you see uh, this tower it reminds us to maybe lords of the rings and it's actually a palantir pastiche um, of a firm you see bloom or blume um, and this, this kind of um, um, Palantir Tower belongs to this company which is about uh, to take over governmental tasks of surveillance. Of It's a, it's a multi-billion um, um, corporation basically taking over, a monopolist taking over the digital realm and um, also corrupting politics a lot, and which is very interesting for us because we have this kind of Palantir pastiche here with this kind of power, which actually looks like Lords of the Rings possible. And we thought as this game is a lot about like, you know, hacking culture and mm -hmm. kind of thinking a bit further, like, uh, yeah, internet culture and, and, and all of this kind of things. It's maybe a good place uh, to talk with you um, about uh, your book. Um, Would you give us like a short intro or your audience, our audience yes. to what, what your book is about and, and how that fits into this space? Yes, of course. Um, the title of the book is Exit Reality and it's uh, an investigation on internet aesthetics. So it talks about a lot of different images, sounds, text and other uh, kind of content that, are, that um, users produce and they publish and they share on the internet and all these aesthetics are kind of created collectively by the users online and the the connection is um, I mean there are multiple connections but the most important one is that like gaming culture is central in most internet aesthetics like in terms of The, the the shapes, the colors, the ideas, the words, the lingo that they use. So like like gaming culture is kind of everywhere in internet aesthetics. And also it deals with the relationship with technology in general. So I think that we, we are going to find a lot of um, common topics to discuss. Let's see. Um, 
maybe just one more word. We are like this, those two characters now, Leonhard and me are kind of um, um, operating them. Um, uh, we, yeah, like this one uh, has the special ability to control this drone, so you can like fly around with it. Um, I, I'm, I'm this character with the funny uh, trousers. Um, oh, 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 Opala. I fell down. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm slightly wounded, but nothing uh, ha I'll happened. you up. Oh, thank you. Uh, we thought like a good starting point for, for, for this could be like uh, this beautiful sculpture. Somehow, is, is that like we see this sculpture in public space? It does not exist in reality, in real, reality London, so they put it there. Is that like the internet aesthetic that you're talking about? Yeah, uh, yeah not really, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, most internet aesthetics that I describe in the book are um, using low resolution images, poor images, and not this, this culture is more like um, like a, a, a kitschy interpretation of high-tech consumerism imagery, right? It, it, and it, it is supposed to be very polished and very like um, high-tech looking. But weirdly enough, um, like the, the, the strategy that, that they chose to, uh, to pursue like here, like to signal the fact that it is a post-digital object is to uh, make those kind of pixels visible. You know, the, the, those blocks are supposed to be pixels. So it's weird because of course, when you have a high resolution objects, you don't see pixels. But here pixels are kind of, they are a symbol of, like they are signaling the fact that we are in a post digital kind of, uh, right? So digital equals future in a way, but they need pixels too, <laughs> to kind of tell them, tell, the, tell us about it. It's a funny, right, that uh, pixels are kind of retro, right? So yeah. we don't see them anymore. Yeah. But still, they kind of signify future or yeah. something like <laughs> <A> digital. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, um, it's more of a, what you said. It's more of a um, uh, NFT art kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. It looks like it, it is more similar to a lot of. Um, crypto art that we have been seeing lately, like in the past two or three years, um, that had, that often had this kind of also default kind of aesthetics. Like it's, it's very cliche, it's very stereotype, it's how you would imagine, I don't know, a render of, of a human being, the default one, right? Because kitsch in general, it's about using, uh, reusing existing things without questioning them in any way. It's about repetition. And yeah, right. Ah, but it's turning around. You see, you see crypto. Crypto made easy. Made easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Makes the fear sense. Is growing. Yeah, yeah, the fear is growing. So. Uh, shall we like search for a, um, a vehicle yeah. that could bring us uh, around yeah. nicely? What would be fitting um, for this city? Maybe we could go down the street, which is kind of ah, right. here. The Some cars are spawning. Right. Tell us if you like a car. Or, or something. That What's happening this to this? Okay. The truck. There's maybe something a bit like Londonish or so. Yeah. Ah, there's a bus back there. Maybe this one. Could ah, be yeah. nice. Uh huh. Maybe. Let's hunt it down. Yeah. We are not very, very fast with this drone. Huh? <laughs> oh. So. Oh, <laughs> did you did you like die? No. Okay. I'm <laughs> self healing. But we lost it. Yeah, like, maybe it's yeah. maybe maybe the bus is um, like despawning. Yeah. Like the other buses are spawning in me <laughs> inside right. us. There are still those maybe phone boots. Yeah. Maybe let's take <laughs> another car then. If yeah. we don't find such a nice one. Yeah. Maybe we find one. Ah, maybe this, oh, this taxi. One. This taxi is nice. That's huh? very this is appropriate for all this. Yeah. Okay, wait for so us, can, wait for I us. Can, I can let it stop. So. Uh -huh. okay. so we're hacktivists, we don't need to actually drag out drivers oh, from cars like in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> we just... <laughs> so it's a self-driving car, yeah. which is also like governed um, um, or like overtaken by, um, of course, Blume. So uh, I, I put the waypoints to... 
to let's let's uh, drive to uh, what do you think about the uh, Chinatown maybe as a first stop? Why not? Let's go to Chinatown. Right. Let's uh, let's pass by. Let's see if Chinatown is ah. like the current know. one or it's different. You prefer the bus? Okay. I have to take you take the taxi. Okay, okay yeah. I take the taxi. Do you take the bus? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely nicer, I agree. <laughs> I really did not use my driving license for six years, <laughs> 20 years. Yeah, we in, in our tours, we always select Leonhard as the driver because it's always the uh, funniest. Uh... So this is an ambulance, I should yeah, not have time. Yeah, yeah we, we, we. Yeah, why not? But the ambulance can take over, can take uh, off this uh, motor bicycle driver, I guess. <laughs> but the ambulance is probably empty since there's no more social services in operation anyway in this, yeah. in this version of Lotto. Are those drones spying on us? Yeah, I, I guess. Like, this uh. is part of this surveillance totality here that you have a lot of drones, but you have also packages, uh, driving, and and you have camera mm -hmm. drones, and then you have like drones who are who are um, for 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 like securing and fighting and shooting. But you can hack parts of them. Oh yeah, of course. So I think this is kind of the portal to another region. <laughs> <laughs> Let's explore it. It's a good thing you picked this car for a city tour. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you it's, pra it's practical. Uh, it's, this person gets aggressive. No, I, but I'm out. I'll say. Nothing there. They're just sleeping. So these um, are holograms, no? Yeah. What do you think, think about this kind of representation of Asian culture here? I mean, it's always stereotypes, but. But you see, like it's it's kind of an interesting pastiche, I would say, because yeah. it's uh, it kind of it's kind of a London cliche, but uh, but somehow a bit futuristic. Like this bus looks. I mean, I think yeah, this the, bus looks really cool. Like, but, uh, yeah, the bus looks like you can recognize that it's the typical London bus, but it it, is, it has this more sleek design. While Chinatown was not that futuristic. Oh. It was, oh. <laughs> Where is this train going? <laughs> ah, I have a um, you, you need a, a new... about. I have a round. Ah, okay, so you're on track, Leon. You're on where to go. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, let's go to maybe Trafalgar Square or something, right? Yeah. Uh, something that our audience would know, maybe, or mm -hmm. have heard of. Look, I can also like. <laughs> oh. Are you racing? Yeah, this is a racing. <laughs> race, yeah. But I mean, it's like it's kind of also funny, right? Like how how uh, uh, hacking works. It's like you have it with with one button. You kind of hack everything. It's kind of all all those tools. They are designed and like, maybe a little bit of an inconsistency in the game. Also that. Uh, <laughs> What are you doing? I, I just, I just like, I just visualized what you're talking okay. about. So I can hack in all these cars. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah. So maybe we get out. No. So yeah, we get. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's stop here. Okay. Let's destroy so, the bus stop and. Let... So Albion is one of the other um, companies um, here who are ruling everything and who are dominating, and it's kind of, I think, a privatized army which serves the state but rather the state serves this uh, of course private army it's uh, it it's kind of i mean you know the the, the way they, they they apparently they really wanted to make like a critical game a game that uh, that is a bit like you know feeding on mm, you know resistance and activism and 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 those things are kind of cool in the game and you're also like an activist or a hacktivist um but at the same time, it's a bit of well, I mean, it's a bit of a simple critique of everything, of course. But um, we can maybe talk about this a bit more. But what is maybe the most, like, so to say, uh, innovative thing about this game that 
you are not um, a single avatar, but you are like you you are basically a movement. Like your avatar is a movement, so you can recruit people, you can walk around, and basically everyone around could be like part of your team, and then you could play this character also. And it you shouldn't get attached too much to your characters because they die, and then you have to switch, and someone else would take over, and they have different abilities and so on. So um, it's really. I mean, I, that's maybe th something that I, when reading your book, I, I thought that's maybe one of the connections that I could really see that this is, it's like trying to, to show this as a collective thing, right? It's like the collective is really in the center. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is a, um, a central aspect of internet aesthetics is that they are built collectively and that there are, that, um, communities form around them and, and also, um, in a similar way, this, these communities are not stable and mm -hmm. also most of the members are anonymous or pseudonymous. And so these communities, they form, they disband, they change, sometimes they fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's it's always changing, but uh, people like treat those images uh, as a, like a common kind of um, thing. And so they use images, sounds, and text to, uh, as a way to also communicate and, and build a sense of um, connection and family between them, like to, to, to find a way to communicate feelings and emotions. And, and yeah, and, and the, the, this idea of, of working collectively, is, it's, it's, yeah. it's really central, yeah. And also maybe about changing identities, mm. yeah. Yeah, it, in the game, it, they, they recruit in a way, you recruit people um, by um, helping them out. Mm. So basically everyone is kind of suppressed by this, you know, kind of, um, yeah, the companies and corrupt government. So if you like help them with their problems, they will join you. How do these communities recruit? New oh, people, do they also do it's that? it's a spontaneous kind of thing. Like that, that's not really a recruitment process because there is no leader. Mm. Because it's like people just meet, they connect, they produce things, other people, and they share these the the contents on the platforms. And other people, uh, they just come across the contents. They kind of feel like a very deep connection for some reason, and and they decide to kind of appropriate those things and rework on them. And in this sense, it's very similar to how memes work. It's you, you, you find a thing that you, that you think it's interesting and you just download it and you do your own version or you just get inspiration from it or you mix two different things together to produce a new one. So mm. that's how it works. It's not, that's not like a formal process of recruiting. Mm. So, and they are kind of unstable, so they can yeah. also fall apart. A lot. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Very fragile. Yeah. What, Maybe what, it, what's okay. kind of striking you, because you mentioned uh, that you can recruit literally everybody in this okay. game, right? Uh, all the, yeah, all the, all, it pass, all the passerby. And I think that's interesting because it points uh, at how the game imagines surveillance capitalism in a much more naive, uh, uh, simplistic way. Because, it, you know, in real life you'd have surveillance capitalists would utilize data in order to gain a sort of like soft power to, to establish a hegemony. But whereas here, really everybody is a potential enemy of of this Bloom Corporation because basically they're, they're collecting data for the mere sake of like evil repression. So yeah. all you do, all you need to do is like approach people to just you know, give them a call and they're, they're up to the job to help you. And try they're ready, yeah. Yeah. And like, like the way also, yeah. how, I mean, this is very simplistic, really. How, like, it's like this 1984 kind of suppressive state, which is not really like a hegemony or something. It's more like people don't want to be part of this um, system, but they are kind of forced because they are kind of adapted or they have some problems, so they kind of have to follow it. But in, inside, like everyone really hates it. And, and, and doesn't want to be part of this. Mm. Uh, like, um, so, yeah. So, ideology is kind of replaced with propaganda and repression. Here yeah, in, in yeah, the... right. So, your ideology is basically that you rebel, kind of. Um, so, let's, let's go yeah. um, further on. I would say 
into the digital nature, no? Yeah, that's... You got I think a pass? I got a pass. Sorry. A pass. Yeah. Bobin, I'm not getting any sound from your game, by the way. Is your, do you have yourself muted? I, I, okay. Sorry, sorry. So it's they're spawning in my way. That's really hard to avoid them driving over. I'm I'm following you to the yeah, digital the, nature. Let's 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 oh, that is a bit of the, let's let's park our what do you say our bus here. Oh, nice okay, place. that's perfect. Uh, I'm I'm stuck. Okay. You're stuck. So put, 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 put the <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm coming to uh, push you, maybe? Or something? Okay. Some. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So. Okay. How that's Look at here? this cute little couple of buses. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, uh, back. Okay. No, that's nice. I, I'm, I'm wondering what the city government is thinking that their buses are parking here on the island. Yeah. Um, so let's maybe look out for um, some nature. I mean, what what is uh, what what is what is nature for for digital aesthetics? What what does it mean, or how is it connected? Um, for I mean, nature ha can have multiple um, roles, um, but mostly, uh, especially when it comes to parks in the city, um, for the people that spend a lot of time online, for the so-called chronically online, the natural elements such as trees or grass, they are seen as a source of regeneration. You see the guys went to the park to kind of uh, breathe and relax and maybe meditate also, I don't know. So the, the, the nature is a source of regeneration. So this is why the meme, uh, go outside and touch grass is so popular. This is, it, it is supposed to be uh, an antidote, right? To the, the uh, like being too much online, like the, using technology like too much and, and losing uh, touch with reality. Um, so go outside and, and, and touch grasses. Can also mean like take a break uh, from what you're doing and just go outside, gain some perspective. And also it can be insulting because it can mean also like in the, in the context of an online discussion, it can also mean uh, you, you don't have, you, you are, you're, you're losing touch, right, with the real world. So you don't really, you, you just um, look at reality through the filter of the media and you're losing touch with reality. So you need to go outside right, and metaphorically uh, touch grass. But yeah, but generally speaking, nature is like the, the opposite of technology in, in a very simple kind of dichotomy situation. Or you find it in dreams. Dreams are full of um, grass and lawns and digital, uh, yeah, representations of nature. Think about also the the famous um, Windows desktop, right? Oh, yeah. Bliss. That is that one is a landscape, and it's supposed to make you comfortable, relax. You open your computer and you see these beautiful hills, mm. and you want to go there. So nature is always a symbol of. Um, positive things, positive state of mind. Which is, uh, which is, yeah, something that is heavily digested in, in, in this um, aesthetics and, and yeah. images and stuff. Yeah. Or it's badly rendered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it is, yes. And you see all these weird things, but they are green and so, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Gives us a nice feeling though. Maybe, but can we touch grass in this game? It's kind of difficult to really touch it. Now it's kind of, I'm, can kind of run into it maybe, but it's not it's hard to like really. You can touch grass in the game? No. no. no it's... You can't kneel down or? 
I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, I can do this. Yeah, but not with your hands. You can't tip, lie down. No. With maybe your drone. I, you, oh. Maybe, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe. It, so uh, you need like a, a, a technical this. device to... To touch grass. Get, get in contact with That's nature. ironic. <laughs> okay, but maybe enough of this. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I'm waiting here with uh, okay. a nice... Um, New car. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like middle class uh, car. Great, I'm, I'm joining you. Wait, 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 wait a second. Uh, this this oh, no. person is confused. Yeah, because you're parking on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next stop? Maybe... Um, the boulevard. Yeah, maybe some driving would be nice. Um, as, uh, yeah, you're setting the way, Mark, to the river. Yeah, yeah um, let's go to the sorry. river. Let's go for a quiet drive. Okay. Now, uh, maybe this okay, car, can we do better. that? This is better. <laughs> yes, yeah. let's get this yeah. one. This is the, uh, the... We were searching for this car a long time. So, do I also feel... Oh, wow. This is... You, yeah, you, wow. Would, would you like to have a Tinder date in this car? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I like the car, not the Tinder date. Is that is that like internet aesthetics inspired? Yeah. What? Yeah, it... it, it looks like um, those futuristic cars that you can see in, in some vaporwave videos or synthwave videos to be more precise because there are aesthetics but also like mm. subgenres okay, of, of course, those aesthetics. Of but yeah, it's this um, futuristic version of cars. So how we imagine cars of the future and also how we used to imagine the cars of the future in the past, but they are still not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit retro, maybe somehow like this shape. Yeah. This shape stuff. Um, is there any way to think of uh, mm -hmm. like the future without like relating to past imageries? Like, mm -hmm. is there any it's kind very of, difficult. Yeah, to get, get rid of this kind of uh, retro futuristic Restrictions we have in mm -hmm. our mind. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 a recurring thing. Like I don't know if you can really like get rid of it. But we have a specific image of what the future should look like. Do we? I think we do. Uh -huh. I think. I mean, we in the sense like our Western society has a specific idea of what the future. Could look like. Could should, maybe should, should look also. like, yeah. If you were wondering why uh, we were driving so safely and nicely, it's because there's the autopilot function uh, mm -hmm. in this game. So you can actually like let, yeah. the, let the car drive uh, itself. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, as we're talking about uh, Vaporwave, which is mm -hmm. like a big chapter in, yeah. in your book also. Um, yeah, the, 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 the car ride is a, a very, uh, it's, it's a recurring image in Vaporwave uh, videos, especially. Um, and also, it is an image that it's using, it's, it's used a lot by people, by users to describe the feelings that they had, that they have listened while they listen to Vaporwave music. like, And they connect Vaporwave music with memories, maybe of their childhood when they were driving in their parents' car, like in the back seat, just watching the the landscape going by and just, or just uh, falling asleep in the back seat. Um, and also it's about, um, like the car ride, it's also um, about pointing to infinity, like sliding toward infinity. So how you, you find a lot of these very long, straight roads and those cars, they just drive towards infinity. And sometimes in, at the end, there's like maybe a sunset or uh, some other kind of very uh, attractive uh, imagery, like some sort of a goal that you're going to. But so it's have, you never arrive. You never reach it, no, no. because vaporwave is about like uh, an infinite loop. Generally, like it's it, it the sound, but also the images. Everything is continuously looping and not arriving anywhere. Yeah, but it's um, also isn't it also looping in the sense that it's like as an aesthetic category, like the things that you mentioned, like associating, you know, freedom 
mm-hmm. and, and this this kind of like uh, safe space with cars of course like because this nostalgic association with a neoliberal consumer culture through the 80s yeah and and i guess we've come to learn that you know this is a, a concept of freedom that hasn't led us anywhere so far and isn't going to lead us anywhere yet you can't let go of the concept of this nostalgia even though it's sort of hollowed out from its promise yeah it's it, it's a ghost memory uh, from the past that that haunts you to this day yeah you're right it, it is vaporwave it is a lot about unfulfilled promises so maybe um you can have this memory of when you were a kid and yeah and you were uh kind of comforted by uh, consumerism and all these things that you were desiring and maybe sometimes even having and all the promises of a bright future also technology was presented as something that could uh, that would uh, improve people's lives in, in, in many ways so yeah it's now we know that uh, most of those promises were fake <laughs> and but we cannot i think we it's it's difficult to get rid of that feeling because again it's about feeling it's not really like a, a rational kind of elaboration of the, the the of what happened it's more like about how you feel your memories and so you it's the memory of a memory it's it's try it's wanting to relieve a memory well, that's that's what it what it's about that's how all this aesthetics kind of started. <laughs> yes, yes. Vaporwave it's where all these like nostalgia wave starts. We're still completely in into that. <laughs> like we're still in the Yeah. Yeah, and you selected a, a nice track also for our part. Yeah. Right. This is Nobody Here by um I mean the track was published uh, on a YouTube channel in 2009. The YouTube channel is called Sunset Corp. This is also a very significant kind of name. It's the Corporation of the Sunset. And um, behind the track, we find Daniel Lopatin. Maybe you know him with his most famous uh, pseudonym, which is uh, One of Tricks Point Never. And he is considered one of the precursors of the paperwave genre. And he uploaded this, tr- uh, this track on YouTube with a video that was um, about that, like it, it is like this um, kind of rainbow pyramid that points to infinity and the music just loops this nobody here piece on and on and on and on. It's just, it's a sample from an old song from the 80s that it's looped identically for two minutes. And with that, you have this very simple video with this rainbow pyramid, it's kind of hypnotic. It is supposed to hypnotize you a little bit. And and there's this idea of maybe being able to transcend and maybe reach another mental state, right? Yeah. Shall we listen to it? Yeah. You can close your eyes and imagine the pyramid that goes Right, from, uh, from this kind of nostalgia memory thing, let's get back to the game and go into memory culture maybe a bit. Mm. So what happened here? It's a speculative terrorist attack. We see here, just to get into um, the... the surveillance cameras, which is one of the features uh, that you can get into the CCTV cameras. Okay, that wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> um, and and you, can, you can hack your way through the city or through buildings through these um, surveillance cameras. 
And here we have. Um, so you need to have sorry. So you need to have visuals of the next item you want to hack, or what? Like you can hack from one camera to the next, or how does it work? Yeah, like like this here, for okay. example. You see. So I'm in inside of um, this camera. So, but but what what happened here um, is a speculative terrorist attack. Um, nobody really knows who it actually had been or is responsible for that. Um, the hack activist group is blamed for it. But what is really interesting that um, the city um, takes on um, to suppress people even more after this terrorist attack, um, like um, enrolling a state of exception, um, and so even more surveillance, even more violence, and and this is this is actually in this kind of lore, in this kind of storytelling, this is kind of the reason why this terrorist attack actually happened. That the city, or the government, and these private security firms can really rule you, like as 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 um, maybe also Foucault said mm -hmm. is that that you can really rule like the politicians can really rule just in a state of exception and this is why it like kind of like we have this kind of ruin a speculative ruin of the future so and do do ruins play uh, a role is that is a ruins like a, a thing in in in, in the yeah. aesthetics that you are researching yes especially vaporware uh, but not ruins in the sense of um, buildings that have been destroyed it's more about uh, places that have been abandoned or things that are so old that are kind of ruined by the passage of time yeah. so it's either an abandoned place, uh, so a place that it's kind of rotting by itself because nobody care. I mean, takes care of, takes uh, care of it anymore, or it is about ruins in the classical sense of the world, like ancient ruins, like classical statues, columns, old buildings, like from Greece or Roman periods. So, like ruins in the classical sense, or in a, like archaeology, and so yeah, in this sense, ruins are are present, but not like as it's very rare to encounter like the, the 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 topic of destruction in itself. It's more about things fading, things just dying spontaneously or just ruins. Or we abandon them because we don't need them anymore. So because capitalism and consumerism they we, we, we need new things. So we abandon the old ones. And for example, um vapor waves uh, vapor wave is contains like the images contains a lot of moles but now moles are dying so <laughs> and people are particularly excited about dead moles they are also called zombie moles right maybe we can come back to this a bit yeah later, even mm -hmm. um we have a we are hacked right now mm. um like almost into the computer of someone else you see that bloom logo here everywhere of course yeah, yeah. so that's a that's a, a battle a, station. That's a battle station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's another thing that I mentioned in the book, the battle station. That I mean, um, it's a word that gamers use. Not only gamers, but mostly gamers use to to refer to uh, the the place where, like, the the the, the computer desktop computer that they used to play um, at home and like. And, and I mean, now we use a lot of mobile technology. We have laptops and, and smartphones and tablets, but the household computer station has maintained like a, a symbolic value. I mean, not only because sometimes you need like a, a, a faster or more powerful computer, but also because in, in some ways, especially for gamers, battle stations are altars they're kind of a sacred space where you can go and you can open this portal to other dimensions right yeah always still important like yeah um, um the, the, the yeah the entry the yeah the entry point yeah somehow a magical place a magical place and also a lot of people they take care of it they customize it and then they share photos of their battle station like and ask other people what they think about right. like what do you think about like rate my rate my 
part of stage, so I rate, rate my setup mm. um, and tell me what you think about it. On the other hand, we see also a lot of terrible part of stations. Yeah, uh, especially on Reddit, we see this really, uh, those are ruins maybe also. Ah, like, yeah. yeah, computers that are like the only like intact thing is the machine and it's, the machine is surrounded by, I don't know, garbage, ruins and other stuff. So. What happens there? <laughs> no, it's fine. Ah, it slowly gets up. Oh, that's the tape modem. That's the tape modem. Yeah. It, yeah. But so the, so the, before we get into this, mm -hmm. this ruin that we're leaving behind in the mm -hmm. game lore, it's basically this terrorist attack is is served as like the legitimization for establishing the surveillance state in yeah. the game, right? Mm -hmm. Which I guess, of course, it's here portrayed in this more like uh, or oh, less nuanced, more naive way. But I guess we we do have. Everybody, all of us who engage with politics uh, have this frustration, I guess, with the fact that this permanent state of emergency is being used to sort of like suppress any possibility of utopia because we're constantly like being being told that we're now in a mode where we're just in a, in a crisis prevention mode and now is not the time to enact utopia. It's just like the way to be, it's just the time to be like, to be like Hollande, and, yeah, yeah, to yeah. be Hollande and yeah. establish a permanent yeah. state of um, emergency, yeah. Okay, so now we're at the Tate. Yeah, so that became of the Tate. Uh, uh, interesting. It's a, a very <laughs> a rule affirmative to make a um, special yeah. <laughs> exhibition, what you say. <laughs> what is this it, royal... Uh, it's uh, Regal Pop. Regal Pop. Yeah, yeah it's a awesome. pop art exhibition about the royals, I think. Who wouldn't like that? I don't know. You see the Yana that says, yes, pop art. I mean, the Brits probably would enjoy no. that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. It, yeah, the museum, like the building looks exactly the same, but it is like transformed into a, an amusement park. Like it, it looks like just, which is something that is actually happening to museums a little bit. Yeah. So again, it's, Different, not, not but bad, not. Right. It's just a little bit exaggerated, but At but some museums are doing that. But just, just like I, I like this is my special special mm. feature as an avatar. Um, I can make myself invisible inside this hologram. That seems like a very niche uh, thing to use. Or yes, <laughs> as we're already a bit further, um, I, 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 uh, I already uh, went a bit. Uh, yeah, in front uh, to a place that you just mentioned, which oh, yeah. is uh, the shopping mall. Here is the mall. Here is the mall, finally. So I'm nicely driving. Oh, 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 no. This was, I'm, 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 this was not, I, I'm sorry. Um, let's get out, not to uh, cause any more damage. But what, what is, tell us a bit more about the mall and its significance for, for the countries uh, that you are right Yeah. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, like Vaporwave is. Um, it's supposed to kind of remind you of the experience of like uh, going to the mall with your friends on a Saturday afternoon in late in the late 80s or beginning of the 90s, and you are you just bought your first uh, Nintendo console, I don't know something like that, and you're really excited and you just go there and you are like hypnotized by the lights and the commodities and all the things that you can buy. So the mall, again, is um, uh, the place of promises and it's the place where you're supposed to get excited about desiring things. So it's it's the symbol of a specific moment of capitalism and that, that was kind of um, full of optimism for a lot of people. Like it, 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 it felt like something that could grow and, and keep um, kind of improving people's lives, but we know that that was not the case. So the mall is, on the one hand, is the place where you spend time when you were younger. So again, nostalgia, but also it's about um, like critiquing, uh, also consumerism and a lot of the things that are connected to it. Yeah, but as I was mentioning before, now a lot of malls are dying. They are not that much used anymore so in some of I, them like are, this one actually it's not it's not this is kind of desert yeah oh oh yeah and 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 also we find a lot of malls in the liminal space aesthetics because liminal spaces are 
uh, spaces that we normally see crowded. So the shopping mall is one of the places that we normally see crowded. Mm. Um, but in, in the liminal space aesthetics, you see them completely empty. Like no one is, nobody here, yeah. as, the, as the song goes, so completely empty. Yeah. And now there's this subgenre that is taking off that it's called dead malls or dead mauling or zombie malls. So an aesthetic that is entirely about the ruins of the early capitalism. So let's jump to me. I'm here trying again, driving um, your city car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I need to go through it this portal. to be the best one, yes? Yeah. Oh, I'm that's sure that's that's uh, uh, that's meant for cars. You so. yeah. picked this route because it was the most convenient, I guess, yeah. to get around the time. It's, oh. it's a portal to a different kind of universe, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that, that looks like a portal. So, and moment. moment. <laughs> It gives me just the possibility to drive oh, yeah. here for um, just a moment. I'm sure this is going somewhere. I mean, I, mean, I think. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, the audience might think, okay, we got the joke already. <laughs> but <clears throat> here I'm stuck in. Mm -hmm. So let's get out of the bus. And so, and then let's go in again. Um, Okay. No, you're... Oh. Oh. No, no, But no. you can remote control. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, this sometimes doesn't doesn't lead to something. It seems like it doesn't lead to something, but... Uh, but wait for it. Wait <laughs> for it. Oh, no. What? Did what? You do? <laughs> it's the first time that it doesn't work. Um, of course. The floor. No, mm -hmm. now in front of the audience because it doesn't or what? No. So you could, the bus also won't go anywhere remote control? The bus uh, seems to be totally stuck. Maybe, maybe it's like because there's somebody lying behind it, it just re refuses to drive over that person. Uh -huh, okay. Can you carry the person away? <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, this person, you mean? <laughs> no, I can't, unfortunately. You were too ruthless. Ah, oh, this is sad. This was, this was meant to be something very really special for you. Ah, but um, <laughs> let's... Let's... Uh, Look it up then. <laughs> oh, we have the back. Oh, okay, so the back back this is what was supposed to happen. Yeah. So usually it looks like this. Okay, so let's pretend. Uh, let's that pretend this we're in the game. Yeah, let's pretend we're live. Yeah. 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 And maybe let's, let's <laughs> switch off your. your, your uh, so, okay, uh, I tried to, to step out of the game. So I, I discovered a flow glitch, which, which is something very, very rare. So gamers really get super ex excited by it and upload it on YouTube, etc. Because <laughs> um, it's so rare and um, in that very moment you upload it on YouTube, um, the company already might discover it and mm -hmm. then fix the bug, yeah, patch the bug. Yeah. So maybe they have now, no, probably not. But yeah, it's like, it's like this glitching out of reality yeah. is like, yeah. like there may be motive. Yeah, it is about glitching out of reality and about um, a lot of people use the term no clipping, which is another uh, term from video gaming. Uh, and so it's about uh, using a glitch or being the victim of a glitch and so being transported out of the world, like in this sort of electronic limbo that you saw in the video, or out of the world, on the other side of the world, on, on the other side of the game. Right. So you're not supposed to be there. So like you're out of the world, like in, in a dimension that in the so-called real world, we, we cannot access really, or I don't know, maybe in, in a sense we can, but it's not really easy to do. And also if you go there, then you're stuck. Right. And, and, and you know where you are. For example, the, the meme of the backrooms, it's all about no clipping outside of reality and find yourself in an unknown place. Shall we try to get out, Valentina? Since Let's try to, yeah, what happens if you try to get out of London? So the, since the glitch didn't get mm -hmm. us out the of London this time around, didn't yeah. work at all, <laughs> we'll so have no. to do it manually. That's yeah. the, end, the edge of the map now where I uh, drove us in the River Thames. Might take, a, take us a bit more time. Shots on. Yeah. But we're actually, there's some progress. I. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so 
of all, let's try to see what's outside London. That should be something that's outside London. At, at least some uh, low poly. Yeah. Beautiful low poly landscapes. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe we're just going and going like in the car ride and you never reach anything. Uh, that would also be very romantic. Yeah. We're looking forward to the place outside. Yeah. Of capitalism? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that there's maybe an alternative somewhere. Nice that it takes so long. It takes a long it takes effort. No, right? It's not easy. No. Also you're swimming. <laughs> not flying and oh Oh we're exiting London now. Oh. oh. Let's try again. Maybe you have a backup somewhere on your desktop to get outside. Oh. oh. No. Okay. It's not so easy to get out. No. But we are going to keep trying, right? Yeah. Mike is already leaving. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, away from... <laughs> <laughs> You get away from keyboard right now. <laughs> yeah. Away from keyboard. He tries to get out. Thank you with this very melancholic ending now. <laughs> Being stuck yeah. in capitalist realism. Yeah, but keep trying. You keep swimming. I, I, I have time. Uh, if you, if you oh, it was a metaphor. You can stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for spending this time with us. 